Santa may have lost or left a bunch of cash for the legislature. We're going to find out tomorrow when the Equalization Board meets. What is this all about? Well, first of all, for everyone at home, uh, you know, late Merry Christmas. I hope everyone had a great time together with family uh, and enjoying going to church this morning. The Board of Equalization is meeting tomorrow. It's a big deal. There's a lot of money. Uh, I think we're up 13, 14 percent over last year. Um, the most important thing uh, that I think the legislature needs to think about with all of this new money and with federal money is making sure that we're investing in things for the future and not growing the size of government so that we'll have to pay for it in the future. Um, if we can do this in a way that enhances the private sector, that focuses on things like technology and recruiting the kinds of jobs that we need, we'll be in perfect shape. So it looks like the legislature may have not been on the naughty list. You know the Equalization Board. It's kind of one of the, it's very esoteric, but the fact is you're going to have more money to deal with next year. We are, and, and I hope everyone watching the show had a very Merry Christmas. We, we had a great time with our family. It was our first Christmas without our mother-in-law. I know there's a lot of, my mother-in-law, Kelly Cox, I know there's a lot of people dealing with that, and I hope you all had a wonderful, wonderful Christmas with family. Uh, yes, absolutely. Here's the reality. We're going to have a 13% higher than estimated uh, income, the largest income in the state of Oklahoma, because here's what the legislature did. We didn't spend all the money. We actually saved that's unheard of for government. If you watch what's going on the federal government, they take all they have and they print trillions more. We actually saved money, so we are in a prime economic position in the state of Oklahoma because some very wise decisions by Roger Thompson, Kevin Wallace, Kyle Hilbert, that crew. We're really excited for next session. It's going to be a great year. Okay, speaking of Kyle Hilbert, I got a press release this week, actually quoted you, and it was about things that we need to be doing. Nursing shortage, one of the things you keep talking about, but workforce shortages, three areas the legislature has really gone point at this year. Absolutely. Vice Chairman Kyle Hilbert of the Sub A and B, or the A and B Committee, wrote a great op ed in the Tulsa World about where we need to focus on is workforce development. And we've talked a lot about this on this show. And, and really, you're going to see us talk more and more next session. We're going to focus on three key issues nursing, engineering, and teaching. And that's what it was about. We have an opportunity with these ARPA funding and with a brand new Chancellor of Higher Education who we are really excited about. It's going to do great things. We have an opportunity to rethink how we do workforce development. Element. There's no excuses. There's going to be a lot of bills. Representative Hilbert and I are going to be running those together. We are going to get this done, and I'm really excited to see what the legislature and this new chancellor are going to be able to do. Looks like moving forward, some exciting times about that. Your thoughts about working the workforce? Well, workforce development is so important for both recruiting new businesses here and then entrepreneurs that want to start new businesses uh, here in the state of Oklahoma, along with things like health care uh, and our education system, making sure that we're getting uh, people trained and into those positions as people start to retire out of them. Um, what's crazy is that I think we have now the third lowest unemployment in the country. So we are getting a lot of people into the workforce, but we need more into these key strategic areas. Uh, I'm excited the legislature is taking a look at this and working on it. Um, it's the kind of focus that will help us in the future. Speaking of future, next half hour we're going to talk about what well, we're just going to look into the crystal ball. Elections and legislature 2022 coming up. We're coming around the corner this fall. Oh, yeah, you asked for it. You got it. Elections 2022. Are they going to go smooth? Give us an idea about what you're thinking we're going to see. So here's my prediction for the election 2022. I really think you're going to see a Republican wave. I think you're going to see Governor Stick cruise to re-election by about 10 to 15 points. I think in the primary, you're going to see James Langford, Senator Langford, come with about a 45-point win uh, as he goes through. And I also predict we are going to increase the Republican majority in the Oklahoma House of Representatives. Uh, it's already 82 out of 101. That's the prediction. Now, in the second question, stay tuned. We're going to talk about legislation, and I'm going to tell you what we need to do to not mess that up as Republicans. And you're way past half, uh, hang half a hundred on them on this, <laughs> this particular point. Your thoughts about these upcoming elections is going to shade the way we look at things, right? Yeah, absolutely. There was uh, another poll out this week by Amber Integrated that's kind of been following a uh, polling month by month. Uh, that Those numbers showed well for the governor right now, I think being 10, 15 points up over any rival that he has. Same thing for Senator Langford also shows well. Uh, I'm not so sure about uh, picking up more seats in the legislature for Republicans this year. I'm not sure that's great for the state. I've always been a guy that thinks that balance is important. Um, I think that the more that we have a mix of ideas that come together uh, when it's our legislature, the better off that we'll be um, as a public. So I hope that we see more common sense folks win on either side. Interesting. Oh, that's a, a wish that we hope can come true.
All right, that's elections. The legislature is coming to town in a couple of three weeks. Your thoughts about where this session is going to vote, what the top line is going to be? Well, yeah, speaking about common sense, I would love to see some common sense come out of the legislature uh, this upcoming legislative session. I'd like to see us focus less on uh, social issues of the day, focus more on the things that we've already talked about this morning, things like workforce development, things like investing in our future, making sure that we're spending both federal and state money in a way uh, that grows our economy and gives our children a better opportunity for the future. If we do that, it'll be a home run session. And if we can stay out of a lot of the unnecessary social issues that just get, keep, get people keyed up for elections, we'll be better. Based on what I see in pre-filing, that's not gonna happen, but we'll, <laughs> we'll see where it, if, how it mixes out. Your thoughts about your leadership, the speaker, pro tem, everybody going forward this year in the new uh, legislature? What, well, here's what we need to do to go through that Republican wave, which, by the way, I think is going to happen with Republicans taking the U.S. Senate and the U.S. House during that election. What state-level Republicans have to do is continue to respond to the people of the state of Oklahoma, have strong fiscal policy, which puts us in the best fiscal position we may have ever been as a state, continue to invest in issues that people care about, continue to talk about things like school options, better schools. If you consider those social issues, we need to do that. And on the national level, we need to deliver a vision. We need to deliver what we would do if the citizens were to give us the U.S. House and U.S. Senate. I think we're gonna do those things and the wave's gonna happen. But right now, the ball's in our court, and it's ours to lose. It's not a new legislature. It's the second half, but I'm old, and I forget. All right. See this again at news9.com slash your vote counts, and follow me on Twitter at Mitchell Talks.